Uh, thanks, and thanks for allowing a, a second round. Um, so much here. Um, one thing I'm told hasn't come up yet is looking at Einstein and, and how it's working. And uh, Director Krebs, I'm going I'm to pose this question to you. So Einstein is an effort to ensure that our federal agencies are protected from cyber attacks. We have Einstein 1, we have Einstein 2, we have Einstein 3.A, I guess, uh, or 3A. Um, and my understanding is that uh, this current program, um, while effective in terms of these uh, monitoring of the federal networks, does not scan the cloud uh, or traffic that comes in from mobile sources. Is, is that correct? So uh, Einstein 3A in particular, DNS uh, sinkholing and email filtering is uh, architected to traditional on-premise uh, on environment with an exchange server and things of that nature. Um, as we shift to the cloud and more agencies are shifting to the cloud, we're going to have to take a different approach. Uh, we're having a number of uh, conversations both with the major cloud providers and email providers uh, that work with the federal government on how we can get the, uh, the transparency um, outcomes, the certain tags that we're looking for in email particular, in particular, and we're having very, uh, the, the progress we're making is, is noteworthy, um, but we are accelerating quickly into the cloud and we're going to have to take a different approach. There's a recent policy, uh, TIC 3.0 policy, and we're going to be sending out uh, an additional security architecture uh, baseline behind that in the next several, in the next month or so, I think. Um, but again, um, we are working through what some of the alternative architectures look like for cloud. I am very much uh, in, interested and invested in this space, less about putting a physical device on a network and more about what, a, what do a few lines of code look like in the Azure marketplace, in the, uh, uh, in the AWS marketplace to get, again, the information that we need to ensure the government clouds are uh, protected. And I would add that these are the sorts of capabilities as we build them out and refine them for the federal government, we should also be thinking about how they scale to state and local governments with the appropriate privacy protections in place. We have similar capabilities under the Albert program for NetFlow and intrusion detection systems. You know, how are these things also shift, uh, able to uh, assist state and local uh, capabilities as they also move to the cloud? Well, you, you just raised a whole other issue, which is uh, state and local government, um, which is a, a huge problem as well. But, but um, you know, we're glad you're there. You have experience working in the private sector on companies that are um, very active in the cloud. And um, we, you know, we want to be helpful. So let us know. As the chairman said earlier, if there are any impediments to that, because you're right, this is where so much of what we should be concerned about in terms of cyber attacks is, is moving. And yet Einstein, for uh, all of its uh, good work, you know, 10 years ago is, is not keeping up with the technological changes. So uh, let us know how we can help you to accelerate that. On the state and local side, since you mentioned that, there is legislation that has been reported out of this committee. Uh, we're, we're patting ourselves in the back a lot on this committee today because we've actually reported out some, some good stuff. But uh, Senator Peters, uh, you were the co-author of this legislation, um, and it basically says what you just said, which is we need to help state and local more. It's called the State and Local Cybersecurity Act. Uh, it would authorize you guys to work with some of these groups, including with the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Uh, and I know you're already doing this. This gives you the clear authorization to do it, to be able to help our state and local partners. And, you know, I guess one question I would, I would have for you is what opportunities exist to partner with some of these nonprofits to protect against uh, the Chinese threats on the 5G space? So that's um, a uh, conversation we're having. Again, I mentioned uh, the Denver event, the Rural Engagement Initiative, where we met with a number of rural providers and some of their trade associations on how we pull together kind of a best practice guide and playbook for how these rural uh, organizations might be able to shift into a non-Huawei, non-ZTE environment. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have to do is distill down some of the investments that the larger carriers have made, the successes, the best practices, they've developed and then we've got to push those down as far as possible because you're just simply not going to find the ability to invest the way some of the larger carriers so how do we again harness that uh, investment how do I distill down my own insights as a cybersecurity agency and then put into you know easy to apply playbooks and frameworks for these agencies to or these these carriers to, to do the things they need to do well again we want to be helpful in that and we think you know it's it's timely uh, one final question to uh, 
this is Ronaldo because you haven't gotten any questions in, in a while. Um, <laughs> we were talking earlier about <clears throat> your work uh, on the expansion of broadband into rural areas, and you mentioned working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the Farm Bill last time. We also had legislation that came out of this committee uh, at, at some point maybe um, um, focused more on the, um, on the rural communities and the focus is to give them the ability through a new commission and so on to do more in terms of uh, broadband. And we also have legislation to help the co-ops do more called the Rural Act uh, because right now under our new tax law uh, there's some confusion as to whether co-ops might lose their tax exempt status if they get involved in, in broadband. Can you tell us a little more about what you're doing, one, with the uh, Department of Agriculture, and has the Farm Bill legislation helped, uh, to your knowledge? And second, with regard to co-ops, are you working with rural co-ops at all on expansion of broadband? Sure. So our current work with the American Broadband Initiative is we are helping coalesce uh, more than 20 different departments and agencies on what we can do as a government to help break down barriers. And as I mentioned, 30% of federal land, 30% of lands are federally held. So is there siting? Um, can we build out uh, a, a fiber? Excuse me. Um, we're also looking at how money is spent. We recently created a tool um, on our website where you can go for a one-stop shop to see where federal grants. Um, I have not work particularly with co-ops, but I'm happy to take that back and I'll get you an answer and I'll be happy to sit down with your staff and go over um, more of the work that we're doing in that area. Well, if you could, that, that would be great. Absolutely. I mean, they're they're a, a natural partner in this and they have the interest and ability just as they've had with electricity. Now it's, you know, it's, it's broadband. Um, so we would appreciate that. And thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you.